I really just don't want to make this about money, you know? I don't like making things about money, but sometimes I have to make things about money in order for it to impact the people that watch this channel. Why? Because it's good to save money, you know? It's good to save money on tools. It's good to save money on software. It's honestly good to save time and money. So if you're able to save time and money utilizing this automation trick, then trust me, you'll love what I can do for you. Sounded a little weird, didn't it? But you know what didn't sound a little weird? This segue into the video topic. So for me, I'm a big fan of Notion and I am a content creator who also uses Google Drive. One of the biggest frustrations that I've had while working with a large amount of content is that I don't necessarily have a sync between a Google Drive folder and a Notion content calendar entity. However, for me, what I figured out was a solution that ends up working across a lot of different things in the automation space that makes it really easy and cost effective to sync items together. Now we can dive into the full Google Drive to Notion Sync at some point in the future, but I wanted to call out one specific part of this entire workflow that saves me a myriad of dollar signs when it comes to keeping everything in sync for a cheap price. So when I have a new content calendar item created, inside of Notion, it then creates a Google Drive folder. This folder ends up linking to something like this video, right? This is the literal video that you're looking at. And inside of here, you'll see that this content editing folder I just clicked on brings me to the folder name, which has the exact same name as the Notion entity. Same with a Premiere Pro project, which is pretty cool. However, what would need to happen in order for the name to continuously sync with the Google Drive and Notion in both directions, or at least in one direction from Notion to Google Drive, is that when looking up the task or content calendar or whatever it is, you'd have to do a bunch of different filter parameters. And sometimes those just don't really make sense or they don't allow you to cross-reference it in a way that does make sense. So when that happens, you end up having to be a little bit more broad. You have to just end up looking for, hey, what are all of the Google Drive folders that exist? You know, like here is a huge list of videos that I'm editing. I'm just gonna refresh the data here. That ends up costing hundreds of automations. So you end up of running it less frequently, making it a less effective automation and just not nearly as important. And essentially having a half automation that only really matters some of the times. And that is because the only way for you to find the data would be to look at all the data and then compare it. However, if when you update a name, it essentially has a reference to the previous name or whatever the previous status is, of anything in an automation system like this. You could then automatically filter everything out, thus saving you hundreds of dollars a month if you extrapolate this off of all of the different automations that you have at a company. So inside of this entity right here, when the Google Drive folder was made, you can see that this says the previous name. So this is the name of the original folder that was created and it's cross-referencing versus the name of the actual Notion entity. So this is the name. This one automation trick will save you hundreds. I'm going to change it to this amazing automation trick will save you hundreds of dollars. And you'll notice now that the formula I have is basically set up where if the previous name equals the name of the Notion entity, then it is matched. If not, then it's unmatched, right? So I changed it and now it's gonna say unmatched. And what you'll notice inside of my search functionality is I layered in a bunch of different things to make it so that these are not gonna do anything regarding grabbing content that doesn't matter unless, you know, it's a future video, it has a folder, and the name is different on the Notion entity versus the last time it was updated. Because right now I could have a search without that filter and it would eat up, God, I think like 150 operations every usage because it's gonna go through, find everything, then update all the names. Now, as you can see, when I press run once, it's gonna filter it to literally the one thing because that is the only thing labeled as unmatched. And now, as you can see inside of Notion again, I set it up in the automation so that the name updated to say amazing now. And since it ended up having the exact same name, it matches and if I run the automation again, it will not cause any problems. I'll have zero remaining. And from there, you'll also see that the Google Drive also updated the folder name and the project name. You can do this with a myriad of different things. If it's a task that wasn't checked off and you had previously 
had a different status. You can have a previous status property that if you're looking for something in an automation, it only affects it if like the previous thing was something else. Then you can have a formula that cross references the previous status or previous name, previous number, whatever it is. And if it changes, then you can refresh it. It's really important because even for me in this moment, I realized I could do the exact same thing with content numbers. And then I just realized I had already done it with content numbers, where essentially if I change the number that's in here and previously it said something else, it would refresh the Google Drive to say, hey, um, actually this number doesn't match. So please refresh it. A lot of different syncing capabilities can happen in these automation tools, but you will spend inordinate amount of money on syncing them consistently unless you have variables referencing what previously was the case. I know this is decently advanced, but I wanted to open up your eyes to some things that can save you some money using automations and open up the way that you think about automations because they really are useful if you end up utilizing them in bulk like I do. We don't have to manage content updating and moving to the next day if we're late on a deliverable. We don't have to update the name in more than one place. When we check something off, it sends messages to team members. When we create a new entity, it does all this kind of stuff, including creating tasks and assigning it to people. You don't need to do this stuff manually. However, you will not be able to afford to do this stuff automatically if you don't know tricks like this. If you wanna find out more tips and tricks on how to use productivity tools and automations, make sure to check out all of my other content on this channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you after watching this video on how to improve your skills even more.